What's going on, Geminis? It's your boy, Gem Mint. Today, we're going to count down the 10 best omnibus for new readers. I get a lot of people that ask me this in the comments, so I figured I'd do a whole video and give my recommendations on what I thought would be the best stories, stuff you didn't have to have too much uh, reading beforehand, and books that weren't too dense, too deep, too confusing. Just fun reads you could jump right into if you're new at reading comics. Before we get started, if you want to purchase any Omnibus Absolute Editions or Collected Editions, check out our sponsor, CheapGraphicNovels.com. They have Collected Editions up to 50% off. They package immaculately so your books arrive in gem mint condition. They even have a bargain bin with sales up to 90% off. If you mention my name in the memo at checkout, your second order will have free shipping. So check out CheapGraphicNovels.com. All right, guys, let's go ahead and jump into the list. I tried to put the camera a little lower so it wouldn't spoil the next book here. But the first one we're going to talk about is The Death and Return of Superman. This has a lot of nostalgic uh, value for me. This is the first trade paperback that I ever purchased. And the omnibus format has The Death of Superman, all the tie-ins, the issues that lead up beforehand, the stories and the other books that were being told, and it has the return of Superman with the reign of the Superman stuff. So, uh, amazing stuff here. This actually has about three or four different printings. There's a new version with an all black cover, which looks really good actually, and it has slightly different content. I think it has a couple of more issues. Let's take a look really quick at the contents of the death and return of Superman. You know what let's go back and forth we got DC over here and Marvel over here this is gonna be the oldest material that's on this list this is the Wolverine omnibus this is volume one and this was a grail of a book it just recently got announced for a reprint which I think has started shipping by the time that I filmed this this is the essential Wolverine stuff because it has his first cameo appearance and his first full appearance in Incredible Hulk 180, 181, and 182. It's got the iconic Frank Miller miniseries. That's Wolverine's first solo miniseries, which really gave the character more depth. It has the uh, Marvel Comics Presents Weapon X storyline, which is kind of like a retcon for Wolverine. It's where they go back and explain how he became Wolverine, where he got the claws and the adamantium, and it tells the whole Weapon X story. And then it has just other cool stuff like Kitty Pride and Wolverine miniseries, uh, the Spider-Man vs. Wolverine, Captain America Annual 8 with that classic Mike Zett cover. You have uh, the Todd McFarlane Incredible Hulk 340, which is a, a, a battle between Wolverine and Hulk. And then it's got the first uh, 10 series of his ongoing title as Patch in Madripoor. So this is an essential Wolverine book. It's an easy book for new readers to jump into if you want to get like the basics of Wolverine. Next one from the DC uh, pile here is the Injustice Omnibus. I think Injustice is a great jumping on point for new readers. It's, um, I don't want to say it's based on the video game. It kind of goes hand in hand. The video game Injustice by NetherRealm Studios, who are the studios who do Mortal Kombat, by the way. My favorite fighting game. They have a storyline, like they always do with their fighters, that coincides with the video game. And a comic book was released digitally as the game was being released and as it came out. Well, this omnibus contains years one, two, and three of Injustice, 
which are the stronger years. I think four and five, it starts to dip down a little bit. But it's an incredible story. You're familiar with the characters. You know Superman, Batman, Joker. You see what pushes Superman over the edge to become a bad guy, which is what he is in the video game. And the artwork, uh, the artwork is great. The story is interesting, fun, and exciting. It's an Elseworlds tale, so that means the stakes don't really matter. They can do whatever they want, including killing big characters or you know good characters turning bad and so forth. So uh, anyway, let's take a look at the Injustice Omnibus. All right, next up we have the Uncanny X-Force Omnibus by Rick Remender. You have uh, a few different artists like Opeña, Ribic, Noto, Tan, Brooks, and Tocini. This was one of my favorite Omnibus. For a long time, it was my favorite one. And you can definitely jump right into this run without any prior reading. It would help if you had some knowledge of X-Force, maybe even have read the Kyle and Yost run. But really, it's a standalone thing. It's one of the best mutant teams of all time. You got Wolverine, Nightcrawler, Archangel, Psylocke. You have um, Deadpool, Phantom X. Then you have others jump in, like Deathlock jumps in a little bit. And it's just an awesome team. It's a cool storyline, very ethical storyline. On Basically, is it okay to kill somebody as a baby who you know will be a tyrant and a murderer and a ge genocidal maniac later on in life? So I like what it deals with. It's well written, it's fast paced, it's interesting, and something you could just, you could just jump right into. Another one that was a whale uh, or a, a hard to find out of print book for a long time that has recently uh, have a, had a reprint. So definitely jump on this while you can. Jumping back over to DC, Green Lantern by Jeff Johns. Now I'm cheating a little bit because this is volume one. There are three volumes that you really need to pick up. It is definitely DC's cosmic epic, right? It's definitely something that's accessible you can jump right into it the only thing that you kind of need to know which i just knew by reading this is that prior to this run sometime in the 90s how jordan was possessed by parallax and he was a bad guy kind of need to know that they reference it a few times he's not bad anymore it's kind of a, re a rebirth of sorts and i think that's the first storyline rebirth uh it introduces the emotional color of spectrum all the other lantern cores the red lanterns yellow lanterns orange all those other guys and it has the Blackest Night storyline in it as well. So the Jeff Johns Green Lantern run, it's a good read. It's not too dense. It's exciting. Uh, the artwork is amazing. The colors are amazing. And it's just uh, an, an epic cosmic tale. Let's flip through a little bit to take a look. Okay, so I mentioned Uncanny X-Force was my favorite omnibus. It was dethroned by Spider-Man vs. Venom. So I think this is a great jumping on point for Spider-Man, although you could jump in right with the Silver Age. But I think this is a, a great time for Spider-Man. It starts off, you get uh, the first appearance of Venom, you get Amazing Spider-Man 300, you get all those early uh, Spider-Man battles that are drawn by McFarlane, Eric Larson, Mark Bagley. It jumps into the first appearance of Carnage and that first little trilogy. Uh, it has a lot of other issues that I really like. Amazing Spider-Man 375, which kind of links up with Venom's Lethal Protector. And it contains the entire Maximum Carnage run. So if you're a fan of like 90s Spider-Man, of symbiote stuff, Venom and Carnage, this is a must-have. Um, I like this better than the McFarlane Omnibus because I like how it jumps to the Carnage stuff and the, ma you know, the Maximum Carnage storyline, uh, Spirits of Venom, which I love that three-part series uh, with Ghost Rider. I think this is a fun book. You got the Veniverse Wolverine stuff in the Marvel Comics Presents. Just a lot of great material. We'll, we'll flip through it right now and take a look. But this is currently my favorite omnibus. I think it just has the best uh, mix of content that really resonates with me. And you don't really need to know anything jumping into it.
You know we had to have some Batman on this list. This is the Batman by uh, Scott Snyder and Greg Capullo Omnibus. This is a new 52 Batman, and this is a great jumping on point for Batman. Batman has such a long history, and it could be daunting on where do you start. Well, you could definitely start here, and if you're new to reading comics, you don't really need to know much. You know who Batman is? You got it. It introduces the Court of Owls. It has the Zero Year storyline. It has Death of the Family, and it's a well written, awesome artwork, accessible Batman storyline that everybody should own. The Omnibus, at least mine, had some issues. The binding was a little tight, but don't let that discourage you from having this big book full of awesome material in oversized format. Next up from Marvel, the Infinity Gauntlet. This is an incredible omnibus because it's not just the Infinity Gauntlet with some tie-ins. It also has the stuff that leads up into the Infinity Gauntlet, like the Silver Surfer issues from the 90s, the two Thanos Quest graphic novels, which are a must-have, probably one of the strongest Thanos stories. And then, yeah, you do get the Infinity Gauntlet 1 through 6. You get the tie-ins, what's happening in the other titles during this time. And you have some post-Infinity Gauntlet stuff, some aftermath stuff. Artwork is incredible. Uh, first of all, you got Ron, a lot of Ron Lim stuff. You got Jim Starlin uh, writing this stuff. And uh, it's just an amazing time in 90s comics. You can kind of see the differences from what they did in the MCU when it comes to getting the stones and Thanos' motivation. It's a little bit different from the MCU. Incredible artwork. It's a one of the most epic Marvel stories of all time. Uh, one of my favorites, and the Omnibus is an awesome must-have that has a reprint that was solicited. I don't think it's out yet. I think that comes out towards the end of the year. So definitely jump on that one when you get a chance. All right, the last of the DC Omnibus. This is a must-have for all the same reasons why the Snyder and Capullo book was a must-have. This is by Jeff Loeb and Tim Sale. Basically, this Omnibus contains their three big stories. You have The Haunted Night, you have The Long Halloween, and you have Dark Victory. These are all incredible Batman stories, easy to read, easy to follow, influential to the Dark Knight movie series, and just a must-read for Batman you could jump right into it. Don't have to have prior knowledge. Those three epic stories are all in this nice big package. There used to be three absolute editions for them. Well, they're still there, but I don't own them anymore because I went for the omnibus. Three amazing stories, must have, all in one omni. Let's take a little quick look at it.
All right, the last book on the list and the last Marvel book is the Planet Hulk omnibus. It's actually not too big of an omnibus, but I feel like this is definitely the strongest modern Hulk story out there. It's something that you've probably seen in other media. You probably saw Ragnarok, which borrowed from this. You might have even seen the animated movie that Marvel put out. But I think it's just an interesting story. Uh, it's rare that you get a lot of standalone Hulk stories, and this one really is a really strong one, man. Hulk is um, comes in his own in this violent gladiator planet which he was supposed to be sent to a peaceful planet so he could just chill but he really thrives there and it's an awesome epic journey uh, of him climbing the ranks uh i don't want to give any spoilers even though it's a well-known book but artwork is incredible the story is dope i at least i like it it is followed up by world war hulk which has another omnibus but you can read this one without having any prior knowledge of hulk it, it really holds on its own and if you like it a lot the ending kind of leads into World War Hulk, so then you could go ahead and pick that up if you're interested. Alright guys, so here are my books, my recommendations for the top 10 omnibus for new comic book readers. I hope you guys found this helpful, found it informative. If you have any questions, definitely hit me up in the comments below. Remember, hit up Cheap Graphic Novels if you're interested in buying any of these type of collected editions. Mention my name at checkout and your second order will have free shipping. Uh, and make sure you're subscribed to the channel. I release daily content every day at 11 a.m. Eastern, except Sundays where we go live, kind of whenever we wake up around that time. Uh, hit the notification bell so you don't miss a video. Hit the like button so that these videos get recommended to more people and we can help out more comic book readers like yourself. Appreciate you guys watching. Stay minty fresh. Peace. <laughs>